Hello and welcome to Academic, I'm Chris Wood and this is episode 7 of Let's Help. Sorry that there has been such a, a large gap between my last video and uh, this video, but it's no coincidence that we have a, a, a six month old boy and at the last video I uploaded was six months ago, so uh, yeah, that's the reason we've been pretty distracted. Um, but of course, I'm, I, I really want to make these videos and so I'm going to, to find time to make them. I really enjoy making them and I think it's good. And now he's he's a, a, a bit older, it's, it's a bit easier. So today what we're going to do is we're going to embed our Elm application into uh, a HTML file. And that takes, a, there's a few steps that we're going to do that. Once we've got it embedded into a HTML file, we're going to add some styling with CSS. So the first step is that instead of getting Elm Reactors we have previously to automatically compile our app, we need to do it explicitly. And we can do that using the Elm make command. And so we give Elm make, uh, this is in the Elm tool, uh, tool chain, which you download from the Elm website. And if we go the jade present Elm, and then this time if we put dash dash output, and we say uh, the jade prison, and we say specify .js. So if you put .html here, it will do exactly what it did before, where it essentially compiles down your app and it automatically embeds it in HTML. But we don't want that to happen. We want to embed it manually so that we can add our styling and whatnot. So there we go. Now, the next thing we need to do, do is actually make our index.html and, and actually embed it inside it. So let's, let's do that. Okay, so I've made our index.html file and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have this, just all the standard HTML boilerplate, the character set, language. We've got our title for our application. We have a link to the style sheet, but that doesn't exist at the moment, but we're gonna add that later. Uh, we've got this inside our body. We only have one element and it's just this div. It's got the ID main and it has a class main grid, which we'll come back to later. And then we source our, our Elm application, which we've compiled down with Elm make. And we specify, we find the, the node, this main node here, this div, and then we embed our application directly into that node. So that's great. That's, that's all that's required to do this. And now that we've made this, we should be able to open this file and um, be able to see our application and it should look just as it did before. So I'm gonna use Chromium and open up a new tab with our index.html. So there it is there. And it looks just as it did before and you can see that you can modify everything here. It still works just the same. So it really is just the same. We just embedded it inside the HTML file and it loads up our, our application, which is nice. One thing we don't have though is the little debugger, which we can add on if we just add an extra flag to Elm make. Um, oh, there's a space there. And then if we reload, then you can see we have the debugger back. And we can you can see that as we change things, all of the messages come in and we can see them there. These are all the messages. So that's great. We have our we have our application embedded into HTML file. What we can do now is we can define this style sheet so we can add a bit of styling to our application so it doesn't look hideous. Okay, so here is our styles.css and it has one element inside of this main grid and and I showed you that previously. Um, if we have a look at our index.html, our main div has this class main grid and it's referring to uh, this styles.css. Now I'm going to use CSS grid for, for basically all of the layout because it is logical and reasonable and it's easy to get nice re responsive sort of layouts. It, it's just, I, I really like it. It's relatively modern. Um, there's lots of great resources for learning about it, including uh, grid by example, I think. I'll link that down in the, that website down in the description. But essentially here, what we're doing is we're saying that the main, the class main grid, um, it's gonna be displayed as the grid type. This is required to turn on grid. We're gonna take the height and width to be the full size of the window. And then we're gonna specify this, this special field here, grid template columns. Uh, this is especially, this is specifying what our grid actually is. And we're defining that there is, there are, there are three columns. And I don't know if you've seen this distance, um, uh, this measure of, of of size in CSS. Again, this came out, I think, with grid, um, but it's fraction, if I stand for. 
So you've got one fraction for the first column, four fractions for the second column, and one fraction for the third column. And essentially what that means is that, you know, uh, you can divide this essentially into uh, thirds here because we've got two thirds for our main application itself. And then we've got, well, it would be one sixth on one side and one sixth on the other side that's going to be um, a bit of padding. So now if we compile this, okay, so you can see my CSS linter is giving a mess an error here. Uh, that's just because I don't know if it's just not up to date. This definitely works. This is the format it is, but it doesn't seem to like um, FR. So um, now we can add this. See, uh, now we've got the CSS class. We should be able to get the grid formatting list. So let's have a look. We shouldn't need to do any rebuild. There we go. We have our main grid here. And if we inspect it, uh, we can see that we have our grid. But by default, everything will just go into this first into this first column here. And this is not what we want. But that's fine because we're going to add some more um, some more uh, classes so that we can move it to particular places. But that will involve changing our actual application and giving classes inside our Elm Hub. But that's fine. We'll do that. Okay, so I've modified our main application here. And we're inside um, the Jade Prison Elm, and if we go down to our view, should be around here. Um, you can see that I've added this class here, class character sheet. So essentially, here this is the the our, our main div for our application, the main view div, and I've called it character sheet now. And this means that we've got a class that we can. Um, that we can grab in the CSS and do some formatting so that it's not all in the in the first column. Um, I've also added a couple of other things. If we go, let's see, um, if we go to player information view, you can see that I've added this class up here. Um, and if I go to uh, all EX attributes, and this just pops down here, then you can see that um, I've got this class here, attributes. Now I've also added some extra ones and I'll come back to those in a little minute. But I basically added a class to all of our main our main blocks in our view. So again, if you go to abilities, you can see that I've added this class abilities. So that's great. Now that I've got that, we can have a look again at our CSS. Okay, so back in our CSS, we've added this dot character sheet class. Um, or just the character sheet class, that's what the dot means. Um, and it's also a grid, but it has this property uh, grid area. Now, what this refers to is it refers to its parent grid. So it's inside main grid, and we have grid area. And what it does, what this is saying is that the character sheet element will sit in the grid starting at row one, column two, and ending at row two, column three. Now we've specified one row because we've not specified any extra rows and three columns. So you can see how this, this is essentially defining it. And then underneath we've said that character sheet itself, is, which itself is a grid, has three rows and they have an automatic size. It's not based on fractions like we, we had in the, in the first, the main grid. So let's take a, a look and see what that, that looks like over here. Now, one thing we'll need to do is we'll need to recompile our app because um, we added these classes and then let's reload. Now, there we go. I'll leave this on for a second, but you can see that it's a little bit squashed, but now there is our main grid, right? This is the main grid, the one that we've defined in the HTML file itself. And then we have inside, we've got the, this, this inner grid, which is called character sheet. You can see it here. And that has three rows, but only a single column. And its three rows have been automatically populated with the three main divs that are inside it, the attributes and abilities div. So that's cool. Like we get so much formatting just for using CSS grid, just for free, basically. Um, and you can see that this, this essentially, it will resize if we uh, inspect this again. Um, if we move this, maybe. Uh, you can see that it resizes and all of these columns will resize because we said that the columns are a fraction, right? If it's on a small screen, it's the same fraction as the, if it's on a larger screen. So as you scale it, you'll, you'll keep everything in proportion. And that's just saves so much hassle for styling in general and just layout. 
You can also, like I said earlier, you can make it responsive. You can do some nifty CSS tricks to be able to get it to change where these blocks are relatively. Um, but we don't need that just yet. The next thing that we need, we've added um, we've added classes for all of these, but we, we've not added any grid locations for them. So let's go back and do that and, and make this look even nicer. Okay, so here we are back in our CSS.styles file, and um, you can see uh, here's character sheet, which we defined before, but we also now have classes for attributes, ability, and this extra one, this help one, title box, because essentially I want to be able to put the title in the center in its own its own section, basically. So what do they look like? Well, they, again, are grids, and this one is it has three columns and three even columns, so fraction, fraction, fraction. It's going to be three evenly spaced columns. Each of them are a one-third of the size. Um, and then we've got rows, and I'm specifying two rows. Now, I want two rows because in the first row, I want all of the columns to be the title box. And you can see down here, this is the title box here, and it spans across three columns. It one row, because it's going from row one to row two, but it goes from column one to column four. There's three There's three columns, so it's going from the last, the, 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 the beginning of the first column to the end of the last column. This is how this works in, C uh, in uh, CSS. And then we're uh, aligning the text to the center. So uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, we should just be able to, um, again, refresh and have a look. Now, there we go. It's as if by magic, everything just goes where it should, essentially. Now we've made three columns for this instead of one. It no longer puts them all together. It, it puts them each in, into the, the next spaces, available spaces in the grid. You can see our attributes here. It's nicely aligned to the center. But if we look at attribute, it, is, it spans all three of these columns. That's because we specified that it should span those three columns. And so it puts it there. And if we center it, it'll go into the middle of those. Now, abilities, we've not done as much work on. You can see, again, that there are, there, you know, there are three columns here. We've specified three columns, but everything has just been dumped into the first column. And that's because our abilities, you know, we're potentially going to do some more complex formatting with that. We're not going to split that down just yet. So you can see there, CSS Grid is incredibly powerful for very quickly putting things exactly where you want them. You've specified a grid and you've specified where everything goes and it all just like slots into place. It's just, it's a breath of fresh air for web development and it, it felt so hacky before where you were trying to, you know, get things to be, divs to be next to each other. Uh, it, it was it was a mess. So CSS Grid is, is absolutely great. I really rate it. So that's us for this episode. We have made our web app compiled, compiled down to a JavaScript file. We have embedded that JavaScript file into a HTML file. That HTML file links to our, uh, our style.css. We've also defined some classes in our HTML file and our, our actual Elm file itself um, that we can then use as hooks to grab in uh, the styles.css and apply grid formatting to them. So I, I think it's really nice, it's really powerful uh, and very flexible. And CSS Grid, I think, works really nicely with Elm. So next episode, um, hopefully we'll build upon this, restructure the ability section maybe, and then uh, start adding in some more features. So I, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I was going to talk a bit more about the structure. You can see here that I've not done the, the sort of live coding elements I had before sped up. And there's a good reason for this because Generally, how I, how I wanted to do it is I wanted to show it exactly as I worked, but that's not actually very good for teaching people about things because you have ideas about things, you try them out, because I'm actually making this as I go, I've not made this beforehand. I try them out, it works or it doesn't work, and then I go, oh, well, no, I need to change this and go back and fix it. So what I'm doing this time is I'm actually building it first, making getting all the code in place, and then essentially I have a branch and I'm just pulling in the changes um, using git. So we can pull them in a little bit at a time and I can show you how they all connect together. If people are still interested in the sort of live coding element, I was thinking about doing it um, as a live stream instead or having you know a big long video where it's me doing it live and you can see all of my indecision as I'm actually building this thing. Uh, so if you if you like the idea of that, please, like, uh, please mention in the comments uh, if you'd like to see that. Also, if you'd like to see a live stream, which you know maybe I could organize one every couple of weeks, um, and build a whole bunch of the functionality and we can chat about what I'm doing at the time and you can give me advice about 
what I'm doing and, and I can tell you about the various different tools and things that I'm using. So that would be quite fun, I think. So that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like and comment and think about subscribing. Uh, also sign up for notifications and the little bell icon. And uh, yeah, let me know how you get on with your own LMAP and I'll see you next episode.